Hi, my name is Christy, and I am a youth engagement specialist at the Hilltop branch of the Columbus Metropolitan Library. And today I'm here to talk about fiction writing. November is National Novel Writing Month. Are you an aspiring author? Is there a story inside you that's just waiting to get out onto the page? Well, we're here to help. Keep watching for tips and tricks to consider before you become the next great American author. Then follow the link on our website next to this video to sign up for NaNoWriMo's Young Writers Program. Happy writing! All right, let's talk about a few of the things you'll want to think about before you begin your story. The first thing you'll want to consider is what is your writing style? You may have heard fancy terms like plotters or discovery writers if you've looked into writing before, and what these terms tend to describe is a spectrum that you'll find among different writers. At one end, the plotter gets in deep and outlines every aspect of their story before they actually do any writing. At the other end, a discovery writer sits down and begins to put pen to paper immediately with maybe only a vague idea of the plan that they're going to have going forward. Now, it's important to remember that this is a spectrum. Some plotters do discovery write different parts of their stories, like their characters. And some discovery writers will sit down and plot out as an especially difficult scene that they're dealing with. Do what feels right for you. And if you don't feel like you know what's right for you, an exercise that you can do is to see if maybe outlining or discovery writing is more your jam. Sit down and plan to write two scenes. Your first scene, go ahead and outline everything that you would like to have happen in that scene and then write it. The second scene, sit down and with only like a vague idea in your head of what you'd like to do, just begin to write it. Figure out which one feels right for you and use that for your story. The next thing that we need is to know the type of story that we're going to try and tell. Now, an easy way to think about this is by using the mice quotient, as made popular by Mary Robinette Kowal. The mice quotient looks at stories and categorizes them into four different types. The first is a milieu set story, which is a fancy term for setting. Now, a setting story or milieu focuses on what the reader is exploring through the character. This is going to include examples like Alice in Wonderland, which just keeps getting weirder and stranger as Alice goes down the rabbit hole and discovers many fanciful things. Or this is also very popular in a lot of the isekai stories tropes coming out of Japan, where the focus is maybe not on the character of the protagonist, but more in the setting that they're thrust into. Now, idea stories, which is where the I comes from in the mice quotient, focus on a question, and they tend to finish once that question is answered. Um, popular examples of this include The Martian, which asks the question, hey, what happens if we stick someone on Mars and they're stuck there, they need to get out, or they're going to die? Or any murder mystery, which usually asks the question of, how did this person die, or who killed them? Now, C stands for characters, and they're the character stories that focus on the arcs of growth and development. These are your really fun stories like Star Wars or Despicable Me. So these stories begin with a shift in how a character self-identifies, and they end when that character has a new understanding of themselves. Examples of this, like I said, include uh, Star Wars, where Luke Skywalker, moisture farmer extraordinaire, is dreaming of being a part of something more before he learns who his father is, and he becomes a Jedi. Or Gru, over the course of Despicable Me, goes from supervillain to an adoptive father. Now, the E is the interesting part of this because it's the event stories. You don't see too many of these nowadays, but these stories are a result of the status quo being upset. Something happens which disrupts the life of those around it, and it remains disruptive until there's a new status quo. Examples of this include Junji Ito's The Enigma at Imagara Fault, where a fault line reveals strange human-like holes, and you may even feel called to find the hole made just for you. Or yes, Star Wars, when an event, the discovery of Leia's message, causes Luke's life to be irrevocably changed. While many stories contain elements of, or even all of the mice quotient, when you're looking at short fiction, it's usually best to stick to one type of story so that you don't run the risk of your story being bloated, or you're not fulfilling any of the promises that you've made at the very beginning to your readers. Now, you also need to consider who your story is about. Most stories will have some form of protagonist, the person whose story it is that we're following, and an antagonist, the person or thing that's getting in the way of them achieving their goals. The protagonist is the key to telling the story. Without them, there'd be no story. However, we all have our favorite villains, so remember to give the antagonist just the attention that they deserve. Now that we've got the nitty-gritty out of the way, let's talk about some of the really fun stuff. Where do you get your ideas from? 
Now, you may have experienced a moment in a story where you're like, how did they think about that? I would have never thought of that. That's amazing. Now, authors and screenwriters seem to have this magical ability to reach out into the aether and pluck something novel and at least entertaining out of it. Now, this ties in a little bit into something that you may have heard, which is there's no such thing as an original idea, which is a concept that is true, but there's a big asterisk there. You see, that big asterisk is what many writers, screenwriters, playwrights do, is they take two or more existing ideas and they smash them together to create a combination which hasn't been done before. So for example, if you take The Hidden Fortress, a Japanese story about two peasants who unknowingly help a princess and her general cross enemy lines, Campbell's A Hero's Journey, and pop the pop science fiction of the 80s, and smoosh them together until you get something vaguely movie-shaped, you end up with Star Wars. If you smash Star Wars and Despicable Me together, you may come up with a story where the evil villain accidentally readopts his lost child and becomes good. This has now become my six-page essay on how Star Wars Return of the Jedi and Despicable Me are the same movie. The biggest obstacle that writers of all abilities and experiences will face is writer's block. A blank page can be terrifying to an author on a deadline, and that anxiety interferes with the writing process. You struggle with what to write or feel that the quality of your writing is going down, and it's easy to trip yourself up when you want your writing to be amazing from the beginning. Rest assured, there are ways to overcome the anxiety that writing can produce. My favorite method is called stream of consciousness writing. Instead of thinking through every sentence, choosing the perfect words, and mentally editing before putting words on the page, you just write something. Um, anything. You can write, I don't know what to write, over and over and over again until more words come. The words in your head then flow onto the paper or into the document without real-time editing. Stream of consciousness writing is like removing the weight of that anxiety that you feel so that your words can fly freely. The sky is the limit. If you find yourself struggling when you write, try this exercise. Set a specific goal of either the amount of time or the number of pages you will fill. Put pencil to paper or fingers to keyboard and just go. Don't go back, don't edit, don't purposefully impose grammar rules or sentence structure, even spelling on what comes out. Don't expect a sentence to come fully formed with perfect grammar and the right words. Let the ideas flow and you can edit and rearrange and clarify later. Hello and thank you for reading the entirety of my six-page essay on why Star Wars and Despicable Me are the same movie. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind as you are writing your story. One is the perspective of your character. Are you telling a first-person story where the reader is inside the mind of the character? Or are you telling a third-person story where the narrator is a neutral third party watching the events all unfold before them? Let's say you're telling a third-person story. The next thing to think about is, when is the story happening? This will be the tense of your story. If it's happening in the past, you'll be in the past tense. Sally walked to the school, instead of the present tense of Sally walks to the school. In first-person, this would be, I walk or walked to the school. If you're not consistent with tense and perspective, it can throw the reader off and break the immersion of the story. There's also something called in media res, which is a fancy term for starting a story in the middle of the action. Think about what stories you like versus some that have been a bit more boring at the start. Do you really want to read or watch about a week in the life of a moisture farmer before anything happens? Or would you rather start with the day where that moisture farmer finds a special message from a princess? Let's be honest here, I think I would rather start the story of Star Wars when Luke is finding the message versus week 32 out on the moisture flats. Now, things in your story can be fast-paced or slow-paced, but ultimately the pacing is something that needs to be right for the scene that you're writing. Short, fast-paced scenes convey action and speed. Short sentences keep attention, but they wear the reader out. Thrillers make good use of this. Whereas slower pacing is used more often for scenes that need tension. They draw out what is happening for conscious effect. This could be to have a slow build towards an inevitable reveal or to draw on the anxiety of the reader. Horror often makes good use of slower pacing to play with the emotions the characters are suffering through its macabre machinations. While you're writing, your pacing will vary depending on your scene. 
But you should remember that following a section of fast-paced scenes with a slower scene can give your reader readers a moment to catch their breath when the characters have been handling a tense situation. Now then. Let's get into an element that every story contains, and that element is conflict. Most stories will contain some form of conflict in them. This is the driving issue happening in the story which causes the plot to happen. Think about it. If everyone could get along and solve their differences together, the story would be over, right? There'd be nothing interesting to keep your attention. Conflict drives the characters and the plot into tumultuous territory that keeps your readers on their feet. Now, try not to think of conflict as two people in a fight. Conflict is any time that someone wants something and something else is in the way. Something is preventing them from getting that. This doesn't have to be another person. This could be an element of the environment, or it could even be your character's issues getting in their own way. Now, I do want to leave you with some advice. If you're worried that maybe your characters are going through too much, and you're not sure if you should do more to them or throw more roadblocks in their way, consider this as your permission to make them suffer. To quote Mary Robin and Kowal, your job as a writer is to figure out what your character needs to do and then systematically prevent them from reaching that goal.